I hope that you've invited somebody to church during that time. And at this moment, I'm going to ask if you will follow me to the gospel according to St. John. And we're going to be in chapter 10 on today. Really, we're going to be in the entire chapter. But for um, time's sake on this morning, I'm going to read verses 7 to 18. The grass withers and the flower thereof shall fade away, but the word of God shall stand forever. Again, we'd like to take this opportunity to all of our members that are watching this morning. We thank you for being faithful to the, to the cause of Christ and tuning in on this morning. And we pray that you are attentive and listening to what is going on on this morning. To all of you that may be visiting here with us or wherever you are in the world, in the country at this moment, we just want to say welcome. Welcome to the Sweetwater Church of Christ. And we're glad that you've taken this opportunity to stop by our way. Um, and we pray that you are blessed by the things that go on on today. Day. You know, during troubled times, it causes you to turn to God. When you don't know what else to do, it causes you to turn to God. And I've been wrestling with God, I feel as though, for something that his people need to hear, something that will encourage his people during troublesome and tiresome times that we are experiencing right now. And Deacon Camel, I feel kind of like Zedekiah, king of Judah, in Jeremiah chapter 37, when he came and he said, is there a word from the Lord? I came to tell you this morning, there is a word from the Lord. Amen. John chapter 10, and we're going to begin at verse number 7, conclude at verse number 18. The Bible reads thusly, then Jesus said unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and destroy. I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep or not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catches them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is in hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it up again." No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. This commandment I have received of my Father. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, dear Lord, be acceptable in thy sight. Can you guess what the sermon title is this morning? I am. Simply, I am. Jesus goes back down to the Jordan because he has just been fighting with the Pharisees who have called him a devil. But he knew, I am not what you say. I am not what the circumstances in my life look like I am, not who my friends say I am, not who my enemies are. I am who God says that I am. So I picked out three things that I really want to focus on and I really want to express them. The first one, he says, I and my father are one. So he says, I am one with the father. I am one with the father. This is what they got ready to stone him for because he was basically saying, I am God. And, and, and they got ready to stone him. And Jesus said, for which one of my miracles or the good works are you going to stone me? They said, we're not stoning you for the good works that you did. We're stoning you for the blasphemy of saying that you are God. And Jesus quoted a scripture and said, did not the word refer to those who hear the word as being gods? 
lowercase g, gods, God small g, but still gods, over your choices, over your decisions right now, all of us can say our choices and our decisions have played a part in where we are right now. It's, it's, it's where you have to get to a point in your life where you start making excuses for the choices that you make and you have to start taking ownership for yourself and ownership and stop allowing other people to control who you are. Stop allowing other people to control your worth, your presence, your purpose, and your value. You ought to be through allowing somebody's presence in a building to affect your entire attitude. Where, where, where you can't do what you were created to do because you came in a room and somebody was in there and it just changed your whole mood and your environment. You will have to get to a place where you stop being angry because you came in a door and somebody might have been in a seat that you wanted. It's not all about there you can be happy just to be in Christ you can be happy just to be serving God I don't have to have all of that extra stuff just as long as God looks at me and says that I am a child that is enough for me to be excited for see some of us can't be happy today because our goal in life is to change somebody's mind who's not even thinking about you I'll say that again for those of you that are at home. Some people cannot be happy because your entire goal in life is to change somebody's mind that ain't even thinking about you. You didn't get the car because you liked the car. You got the car so you can drive past your ex-boyfriend's house so he can see the car and he ain't even at home. We're busy trying to respond to somebody that really doesn't even matter. You don't have to be one with people you have to get to a point to where you are one with the Father. Jesus said, I am one with the Father. And he means more than I am one in the sense that we want to be one with God. He means in his essence, in his deity, in his presence. The Bible will later say that he thought it not robbery to be equal with God and made himself of no reputation. Later, Jesus will say, if you have seen me, you have have seen the father for I am in the father and the father is in me you say you worship God but then when God walks in your very midst you reject him he said if you really love the father you will love me because the father dwelleth in me and when the one God who is above you decided to come to you he came in the person of Jesus Christ I want, if you want to best understand the relationship between Christ and God, next time you have a glass of water, put some ice in it. And figure out which one of them is H2O. You can look at the glass and say, this is ice, it's in the water. The ice is in the water. But if you look at it long enough, you have to say that the water is in the water. All right, if, if you don't like the water, then you don't like ice. And if you don't understand that, then put it on the stove and boil it. And when it turns into steam, how can one element be three things at the same time and still be one? Oh, good God, I'm at, how can one element be three things at the same time and still be one? It happens in your kitchen every day. God shows up in the kitchen every morning because your ice machine, your, your, your water speaker, or your teapot, identifiable in three distinct, unique, de definable things, but to the chemist, it's all H2O. Jesus said, I am one with the Father. Pay, 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 pay this flesh no mind. It's just what the Father housed me in. Emmanuel, God with us. See, we, we, have, we have a bunch of people today that know a lot about church, but they don't know a lot about God. We, we know about uh, protocol and we know how we've always did this and we know how we do that. We know, oh, I can wear my white suit, I can wear my black suit, and I know how to do this and I know that. But they don't really know anything about God. If you knew who your God was, you'd stop running from the devil. 
I say it again. If you knew who your God was, you stop running from whatever is behind you. He is the mighty God. He is the ancient of days. He is wisdom itself. He is all power. He is all might. He is all grace and all authority. He is the great physician. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. He is the rose of Sharon. He is the lily of the valley. He is ancient of days. He is the father of time. He is the creator of the universe. He is El Shaddai, all sufficient, all powerful, almighty, all God. Before there was anybody to tell him he was God, he was God all by himself. He is the answer to every question that will ever cross our mind. The healer to every disease. Let me tell you, COVID-19 ain't got nothing on J-E-S-U-S. He is everything. He is whatever we're worried about. Whatever we're upset about. Whatever we're saying. Whatever, remember who your God is. And that's enough to praise God for right there. Now, I remember... The last thing my mom told me before she dropped me off to my first year of college, she looked at me and she said, don't forget who you are. Don't forget who you are. I didn't send you to school to find out who you are. I raised you to know who you are. Don't you let none of the professors and them fast tail girls, come on somebody, tell you who you are. You knew who you were when you got out the car. Somebody just say, I am. I am. Now, now, daddies, you need to tell your sons who they are. Tell your daughters who they are. Mama, tell them who they are. Tell them who they are. A sense of who you are is important. I am one with the father. That's number one. Number two, he says, I am the good shepherd. He said, I am the good shepherd. And the majesty of the text draws us to the second sentence for he goes on to say that the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Which takes us to the cross and the power of the cross and how he proves the authenticity of the statement when he goes to the cross and lays down his life for the sheep. Instead of substitution, he takes the place of, takes a death that was not his so that I can have a life that was not mine. I am the good shepherd. But it amazes me because he goes on down with what Jesus is preoccupied with is not so much talking about laying down his life, but giving a distinction between the hireling and the owner. He says, when the wolf comes, the hireling flees, because they are not his sheep. In the New International Version, he said, I own the sheep. I own the sheep. He's talking about me and you. He said, I own you. You are mine. The people I send to take care of you, if the wolf comes, they may run. But he says, I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd. I own my sheep. My sheep. You're mine. Everything about you, everything you got, everything you're going to be, you're mine. I own the grass that you eat. I own the water in the brook that you're drinking from. I own the wool on your back. I own you. You are mine. And he says, I prove that you are mine. If you are mine, he says, you'll know my voice. And a stranger, you will not follow. This teaches me not to try to be a leader of a wolf because the proof of his ownership is in my reaction to his word if i'm preaching now and you can't hear it it ain't cause it ain't for you if i preach this word and you can't get it and you may not understand it maybe it's because you have not yet become a part of his flock so therefore it's hard for you to know and hear his voice. But I don't care if you just came from wherever you are. If the word of God is being preached, 
There's something on the inside of you that ought to recognize where somebody can say, man, I was here, I was there, I was doing some of everything, I was involved in it. But wherever you were, wherever you went, whether it was a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, whatever day it was, when you were sitting there and the man of God was preaching the word of God, and I don't care how much sin you had in your life, you heard the gospel of Jesus Christ and you recognize within yourself, man, I got to change, I got to do better. God God did not mean for me to live in this kind of life. He did not mean for me to be involved in these kind of things. And therefore, a change had to take place in your life. I don't care who you are, where you are. The word of God is powerful enough to change Come anybody. On. Come on now. The Bible says it this way. He holds the king's heart in his hand. And he turns it whichever way he God can change anybody. Listen to that. God can change anybody. We can't change anybody. Oh, some of us, we run around running rampant trying to change folk, trying to get folk to do this and trying to get folk to do that. Let me tell you, you ain't got enough time in the day to work on self. Take the time that you do, God, to work on yourself to get the things in your life corrected that you need to get corrected. The Bible said, save yourself from this untoward generation. Lord have mercy. You can't get drunk enough that the word of God can't make you sober. Because if you belong to him, uh, you, 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 you won't, the, the, you, the, when the word of God is preached, I don't care what you got going on in your life, you are going to, that's why the Bible says something when you heard it all your life, train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they get old, they will not depart from it. Now, they, 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 may, they may get out of line. But I don't care how far the line they get, they're going to remember the word of the Lord. It took the prodigal son ending up in a hog pen in order for him to realize all that he had back at home. Oh, some of us can say we find ourselves with a pig pen a time or two. And, you know, sometimes that's what it takes to get our attention to bring us to the realization we got a father at home that loves us and is waiting for us to turn from our wicked ways. So the word of God, let me tell you, if you are his, the Holy Spirit will sober you up. It, it, it'll put tears in your eyes. It'll put tears in your eyes. It, it'll, it, the fact that it don't bother you may be a sign that, as I said, you have not yet become a part of God's fold. And that's why it may be hard for you to understand. He said, my sheep know my voice. See, I, I, I was here, I was wrong, but I was his. You remember that? You were in sin, but you were still his. You, you was acting wild, but you were still here. You were acting crazy, but you were still here. And, and when he called you, the, the, it's kind of like God just stepped over all the crazy stuff that you ever did, all the wild stuff that you ever did and said, you know what? Even though you've been through all that, done all of that, you're mine. And guess what? God snatched you out of what you were in. God will snatch you out of some situations if you allow him. I don't mind telling you because there are some folk that think that, that just can't grasp the fact that God can step over all of your mess. He don't bring it up before you, before he decides to accept you. But he steps over all of that stuff and says, I see all of that, but you're still my child. You're still my creation. I still got a work for you to do. There's still a work for you to do. So guess what? I'm going to forget all of that, but don't you take me for a fool. Don't play me for a chump. And don't think just because I let that stuff pass by that you can continue to walk. The Bible says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Once you have recognized the will of God and what God would have for you to do, let me tell you, man, a conscience is a good thing. A conscience toward God is a good thing. Anybody know when, when you had it to do something wrong? And it's just like some of us, man, you know you all that, oh, man, I was going to do it, but I'm going I'm, to I'm listen this time. I'm going to go. Uh, I, I'm a son. son and, and, and I just thank God for those moments where he sees you about to drive off a cliff. He sees you about to go off the deep end. He sees your lips getting ready to say something that he knows that you ought not say. He sees your mind beginning to think thoughts that you ought not think. And God has to step in and say, hey, hold on a minute. I'm here. 
I'm here to take care of the situation. You remember when Jesus, um, when his mother and father, they had left and the, the traveling company, they had went ahead of him. And the Bible says they began to look around looking for Jesus and they couldn't find him. And they went back to the city where they were and the Bible says that he was in the temple teaching, the, 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 the religious teachers and the scholars of that day. And it says that they handed him a scroll and he began to read from the book of Isaiah. And he read that the spirit of the Lord is upon me for thus he has anointed me to preach deliverance to the captive, to open the eyes of the blind, to heal those that have been bruised and broken hearted. He began to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And it said that after he read it, he gave it back to the minister and this is what he said. This day has been full feel in your heart. What do you mean? He says, I am Jesus. I am here. I am on the scene. Whatever your disease, whatever your condition, whatever you got going on, I am here to take care of the situation. And let me tell you, when Jesus wants to take care of it, you better let God handle that situation. When he wants to take care of it, when God wants to handle it, let go and let God. He said, my sheep Know my voice. A stranger, they will not follow. I am the good shepherd. And this is what I want you to get about this. He said, everybody else may run when the wolf is after you, he said. But I'm going to stick with you. I, 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 I bought you, your mind. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. I will fight your wolves off because I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. Let me tell you what he said about his sheep. He said, my sheep shall not perish. In fact, it says, not never. That's a double negative. He says, not never. He said, ain't no way you're going to go down because you're mine. And he says, you shall not never perish because you are my sheep. You are mine. You're mine. And though your feet are dangling on the edge of a cliff, hold on, I'm coming and I got you. I am the great I am. I am the mighty God. Though your friends may leave you, though your job may fire you, though your mama and your daddy may forsake you, he said, they all left because they were howlings. But guess what? I am the good shepherd. And you belong to me. And because you're mine, I, I don't just got your back. I got you. I got everything that is included about you. There is a wolf that we all are facing. We all are fighting wolves. Everybody ain't fighting the same wolf. But guess what? We all fighting a wolf. And sometimes, you know what? It's not an isolated wolf. Sometimes you run up on a pack of them all together. But Jesus said, you know what? Even when you're walking in the midst of danger, I am still the good shepherd. And what I love about a shepherd is that the Bible lets us know in another place that a good shepherd will lead the 99 and go to find that one. Can I tell you something? You are that one. At some point in your life, you were that one. You had strayed away. You had gotten away from God. You have gotten out of the path of God. And God said, you know what? I'm going to leave all of this behind to go out and find that one. I'm so glad that we serve a God that he doesn't just have to take time to focus on one person at a time, to focus on one issue at a time. But God can deal with you, 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 and me all at the same time. His ears are everywhere. His eyes are everywhere all at the same time. He don't have to put me on hold Come on, to go and try and deal Come with on. nobody else. Hey man, I, I know you're praying, but guess what? I got another caller coming in. Guess what? I'm going to put you on hold. God can deal with all of us at the same time. And, and what I just love sometimes is to just sit back and watch God work. Yeah. Let me tell you, man, sometimes all you got to do, those burdens, don't care. I know right now you're struggling in your spirit, you're struggling in your mind. Many people at this moment are battling depression and other thoughts in their mind because of everything that we have going on right now. But can I tell you, as the old song goes, you can take your burdens to the Lord. And you can leave them there. Let God handle your worries. Let God handle your cares. He said in his word, cast your cares upon me. Because I care for you. 
God, God says, I care about what you're going through. I care about what you're dealing with. I care that you're troubled in your spirit. I care, and I'm willing to help you. I got to quit. But he says, I didn't design you to fight what you're trying to fight. I created you not with the teeth of a wolf, but I gave you little teeth. What are you talking about, preacher? I gave you little teeth. You didn't have to go out and try to fight the wolf all by yourself. He said, but if you would believe me to be who I am, and that is your shepherd. That's what David meant when he said, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You couldn't deal with the stuff that you got to deal with by yourself. I know, I know, I know you're Superman, and I know you're Superwoman. The only thing that affects you is kryptonite. I know, I know, I, I know that's what you got going on. But all of us, nobody can handle the situations of this life by yourself. You're not designed to deal with the pressure. You remember when we talked about that pressure? PSI pounds per square inch and that a pressure will burst a steel pipe. You can only imagine what pressure would do for you, child of God. But when you look over and you see your rod and the staff, they comfort you. The staff comforts me because sometimes I stick my neck in the stuff that I have no business in. And your staff has a hook on it. So you can hook me and you can pull me right on back in. I, I, I would have been destroyed, but every time I got in trouble, you came on out there and you hooked me and you brought me right on back in. If there's anybody that's watching that he's ever had to hook you and pull you back in, Thank God that he pulled you back in. Thank, it. Thank him that he did not care so little about you that he said, okay, this is the tenth time that you went out there and you got yourself stuck in the chair. I'm going to let you stay right there. But no, God came and he rescued you. God says, I pulled you out of that circumstance. I pulled you away from that. I pulled you out of the situations where you thought that they loved you and they cared about you. He said, I pulled you out. My staff got you by the neck. I left all of that behind for you to realize, hey, and I want you to hear this. No matter how far out you go, that staff can reach you. No matter how low down you get, that staff is able to reach you but you must recognize who your shepherd is. Remember who your God is. Remember who your protector is. Just think, think about that, what David said. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. When I'm troubled, I got comfort. When, when I'm weary and worn and wounded, I got comfort because I got a good shepherd. He will not leave you comfortless, but he's going to be by your side. And can I tell y'all, I know right now your faith may be getting a little weary. The lamp may not be burning as bright as it was at some point. But I want to tell you all to keep your lamp trimmed and burning. Time is drawing nigh. Do you know that at this very moment, you are closer to your life's end than you were when you woke up this morning. Can I tell you, you know not what the next second of your life is going to bring. What the next minute, the next hour, let alone the next day. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. But can I tell you, I know who holds tomorrow. I know who's in control of tomorrow. He's in control of today, and guess what? He was in charge yesterday. And that is God. He never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and he'll be the same even forevermore. He said, I am. Whatever you need God to be, he is. How you remember in closing when Moses asked him a question? Moses said, okay, you're sending me down here to these folk. You're sending me down here, and you want me to go down here and do this work? I done already gave you all the excuses that I had. Da, 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 you know, I got, I got a stuttering problem. I don't speak real well. God said, you just go open your mouth and I'll speak for you. Open your mouth, I'll tell you exactly what it is that you need to say. But Moses is thinking, man, okay, I'll say it, 
but I ain't got no power. I'll say it, but I don't have any authority. Who should I say sent me? I am. That I am has sent me. So can I tell y'all, even in the midst of COVID-19, he is. Even in the midst of you laid off your job, don't know how you're going to survive, where your source of income is coming, guess what? He is. You're worried about, man, they're they, they trying to send our children back to school. Let me tell you, God is going to protect not your children. God is going to protect those that belong to him. You, you just you remember, you keep yourself in prayer, keep your children in prayer. You just make sure, you can count with that the blood of the lamb is on your doorpost. So that when the death angel come and see the blood, he'll pass your door by. Is God in your house this morning? I, I, I know you say he, 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 I got Jesus on the inside, but guess what? Is it evident in the life that you live? He is. Everything you need him to be, he is. You need peace, he is. You need joy, understanding, guess what? He is. And he's just waiting. For you on this morning. He said behold. I stand at the door. And knock. Somebody knock on your door. That means they want you to open the door. Somebody knock on your door. That means they're trying to get your attention. Hey I need you to open it. So I can come in. I got something I got to give you. I got something I need to talk to you about. I got something I want to share with you. He's standing at the door of your heart. And guess what. I, he, uh, he's been standing at the door all the while. But you know what. Sometimes it takes a COVID-19. It takes a struggle or a circumstance in life to turn down the noise of everything else that you got going on so that you can finally hear there's a knock at the door. He's knocking at the door of God. And he said that if any man will come and open the door, he said, I will come in and I'll sup with you. I'll come in and I'll make my bowl with you. Simply for him to say that I'll come in and sup with you, I'll come in and make my bowl with you, he said, I want to come in and have fellowship with you. I want to have fellowship. Man, it's a thing to have fellowship with God. And let me tell you, when you have fellowship with God, storms can be raging. Lightning flashing, breakers dashing, waters tossing to and fro. But when you have fellowship with God, Brother Campbell, you'll find yourself at the bottom of the ship with a pillar or two and a quilt. Sleeping peacefully because you know, as we say, the storm is passing over. Hallelujah! The storm is passing over. COVID 19 is not going to be here forever. Whenever God's will and His purpose is done, God is going to let this storm pass on back. But until that happens, keep your lamp trimmed and burning. And keep your faith in God strong so that in the coming days, you won't be weary in your well-doing. But you will continue to seek God for help and you'll continue to trust in him. My brother, my sister, maybe you're watching us this morning and you don't know God in the pardon of your sins. You have never had your sins washed away by the blood of the lamb. And I would have you to know simply here, you, you will never hear any differentiation as to how salvation is obtained when you're listening here at the Sweetwater Church of Christ. One messenger is not going to tell you one thing and another messenger is not going to tell you another way. We all read the same Bible and we serve the same God so therefore we have no choice but to come to the same conclusion when it comes to matters of our salvation. And I would have you to know that, my friends, there are many ways and many methods that are being handed out today. There are many ways and methods that people are saying that you can be saved, how you can come to know the Lord. Some will say, you know, put your hand over your chest. Lay your hand. I know some this morning are saying, lay your hand on the TV or lay your hand on the radio and, and pray a sinner's prayer. Prayer is important. Repentance is important, but those are not the only two necessary steps for one to be saved. Well, some will say, well, I, I got the Holy Ghost. Well, that's good, but one can only have the Holy Spirit after they have been baptized for the remission of their sin. How 
How is it that you say that you got the Holy Ghost and you do all of this kind of stuff and you have not yet come in contact with the blood of the Son of God? There is only one instance that you will read about in the book of man, Acts chapter 10 and Acts chapter 11 at the house of Cornelius. And God did that as a sign to the Jewish sect that Gentiles were also to be accepted into the body of Christ. But even after God outpoured the Spirit upon them, it was still necessary that they were baptized for the remission of their sins. The Bible says that baptism doth now save us. So therefore, it refutes the fact that baptism is an outward sign of an inward grace. But baptism is the, the washing away of your sins. The washing away of all those evil deeds and evil thoughts that you have ever done. And the scripture lets us know that you rise to walk in newness of life. The Bible lets us know in 2 Corinthians that if, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So if you desire to become new in Christ on this morning, and maybe you're not even in our area today, I just pray that you would reach out to us, let us know, comment, message us, and let us know, hey, I need Jesus on the day. I, I need to become a member of the body of Christ. You come by hearing the gospel. What is the gospel? The death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. What is it that I hear about that Romans chapter 10 and verse number 17 says, so then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Ain't no such thing as you saved and you ain't heard the gospel because it is after you've heard the gospel that faith is culminated in the life of the believer. So I've heard the gospel I believe the same. He said except that you believe that I am he, you shall die in your sins. Well another scripture said that if you die in your sins where I am, you cannot come. That's simple right there. That's plain and to the point. If you die in sin, where God is you cannot go. So you hear his word believe the same after belief you repentance your sins what is repentance repentance is a change in the mind that produces a change in my action after repentance I confess with my mouth the sweetest name known the mortal tongue and that is that Jesus Christ not Buddha not Muhammad and I would have you to know that in a day and a time right now where folk are looking for a savior, they're looking for a way. I want to tell you, Jesus is the way. Muhammad is not the way. Buddha is not the way. Joseph Smith, John Smith, Charles Mason. No, none of those people are the way. Jesus Christ, he said in John chapter 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father except he come by me. God's got a way. You can't go over. God's got a way that you can't go under. God got a way, guess what? You can't even go around it. There's a door that you got to come in. You got to come in at the door. You got to come in at the door. So my brother and my sister, you're watching here on the day and you're standing in the need of salvation. Do not let it, as we say in the song earlier, don't let it pass you by. Don't let it pass you by. I know in your mind, maybe right now you're saying, well, preacher, all that sounds good, and I know that I need Jesus, but guess what? I still got some things that I got to get together. I'm going to come to church when I get right. Let me tell you, if you wait until you get right, you're never coming to the house of God because you cannot get right on your own. You need the help of God if you expect to get yourself right. If you could get yourself right, why would you need Jesus? If you were good enough to get yourself right, what need is there for you to be saved? The church is not a museum for saints. It's a hospital for the sinners. It's a hospital for those that are sick. Jesus said, I came. He let us know even in John chapter 10. He said, other sheep I have that are not of this folk, them also must I bring. So you're watching it then. You say, well, I don't deserve to be a Christian. I don't, everything that I've done, I don't deserve it. If God can save us, he can do the same thing for you. If he could save Paul, formerly Saul, on his way to persecute Christians, God knocked him off his high horse and changed his whole outlook. He'll do the same for you. I'll tell you today in closing, I don't care who you are, what you've done, where you've been. 
God can change you. And once you have truly come in contact with the master, you will never be the same again. You will never be. The, the devil is still going to be after you, but you will be just like Jesus. That, the, the, it is written. It is written. Satan, I got a word for you. God is on my side. And because he's my shepherd. I know I'm going to make it through this storm. So if you're watching today, you desire to be a Christian, you have this opportunity now. Maybe you're watching and you just stand in the need of prayer. Guess what? That's all of us. All of us right now, we're standing in the need of prayer. Somebody needing for one thing and somebody needing for another. But guess what? We all need God on this morning. Whatever you need him for, he is. He is on this morning. So if you need God, you desire God. Don't let this time pass you by. But while you have this opportunity, while you have this chance, come on to Jesus. You have that. You can do it now. As together we stand and sing the song of invitation. There is a world.